If you are a huge fan of the Emotionally Uncomfortable podcast, I would love for you to also uh, become a fan, maybe, of my book. If you haven't gotten your copy already, Dying to Be a Good Mother can be found anywhere books are sold online. And if you would love some additional resources, then head on over to my website, Heather Chauvin, C-H-A-U-V-I-N.com, and check out the book tab. Um, Dying to be a good mother is a prescriptive memoir about my personal and professional life. It is about how can we stop abandoning ourselves and still feel good. And ironically, it is all about the more alive you become, the better you feel. That is the secret that we are looking for in our parenting, in our career, and in our lives. So Dying to Be um, a Good Mother, you can check it out on Audibles and also my website at heatherchauvin.com forward slash book. How I plan my summers. Okay. So I wanted to do today's podcast episode because I get so many questions about this and I attract a lot of professional women raising children. So these are women who are working, you're working in corporate or you're self-employed or you're managing the household. Everybody's working by the way, even if you don't have a formal job, It's really all about what you identify as. There has not been one day in my parenting career that I have not found myself not working. So you are a working woman. Own it. Anyways, I wanted to record today's episode because summer's coming. And I find humans in general, when you are overwhelmed, You have this all or nothing attitude. Like you're running this race and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, the summer's coming. Oh, I can't do anything anymore. That is so unsustainable. It doesn't matter if you are in business or whatever. It's so freaking unsustainable. So there's three specific things that I do and three things that I'm doing this summer to live in alignment with how I want to feel, to be present with my kids as much as I want to, or not as much as I want to, and also sustainably grow my business, attracting more profit, creating more profit in my business this summer, working on my business one hour a day. But listen to me. I am also taking care of my needs. Yes, How do I want to feel? I'm realigning my day, my week, my month, my year with how I want to feel. So I'm still meeting my personal needs, my physical, emotional, spiritual needs. I am growing my business and I am being present with my kids this summer. People ask me all the time, like, how do you balance it all? Because I think a lot of that's the pain point people think, right? Like balance, balance. Um, I don't believe in balance. I believe in alignment and I believe that there are years, seasons where you are going to be out of alignment, but there's no perfection here. So any thing, any tips or strategies that I use today, I want you to remember that this is my life. This is the season that I am in and you have to make it your own. Now, I've been building my business for over 10 years. My kids are 18, 13, and 10. So they're older. They're not toddlers and they're not infants, okay? But please remember that just because my children are physically older, right? We still have emotional needs. We still have uh, behavior management. We still have things that need to get done. And so what I have noticed as a parent is that things actually haven't gotten easier as the kids have gotten older. Um In my case, they've gotten more uh, challenging. So I don't believe in hard things. I believe things are emotionally uncomfortable. And it's actually reinforced why I do the work that I do. Because if you are not living in alignment with how you want to feel and reverse engineering that, not managing your energy, right? Managing your energy, not your time. Shit's going to hit the fan when life feels very overwhelming, chaotic. So, um, and I want to add too that, I am an only child of a mother 
who currently lives with me. So I am literally this in that sandwich generation where I am now taking care of my parent um, and my children at the same time. So let's just throw that on there, shall we? And all the things. I understand that life is stressful. Um, but summer can also be this time where you can enjoy the summer, right? Things do slow down and I really appreciate that energy, but I also sometimes see people like become a little cray cray in the summer. Like they're like trying to squeeze all the juice out of the lemon and you're like, okay, slow down. So I'm all about this slow and steady race doing less better. And I do things consistently inconsistently. So I'm like, my game is consistency, but I do not expect perfection. Okay. That's my point. Number one, how I'm planning my summers is energetic time management. Oh, before I even get into today, I have two programs that I am launching this summer to support you. So we have Summer of Profit, and this is for women in business who want to grow their profit this summer. Yes, you want to grow your profit this summer working one hour a day in your business to increase your profit. Profit to me is money time and energy in your business. And summer is a beautiful time to do this. So you can work in your business or sorry, on your business to grow it. So when September comes and it feels like the new January, you're ready to hit the ground running and you kind of have things ahead, but you only need to do it an hour a day or less. You don't need to spend that much time to create more profit in your business. So if you're interested in that program, you can head on over to Heather Chauvin, C-H-A-U-V-I-N.com forward slash summer. And we also have uh, the summer of connection. So this is actually a new parenting program that I'm so freaking excited about. Parenting is such a passion of mine and something I have been um, dedicating my life to for over the last, well, I'm, I've been a mother for 18 years. So a good 14 years was when I started to get into conscious parenting and my background in social work and working with children and their behaviors. Um, And this is the first time in a very long time that I am running a parenting program. And my parenting program is called the Summer of Connection. And this is not just about you and how you want to feel as a parent. There's a huge need to help our children with their big emotions as well. So raising tweens and teens, um, how do we teach these emotional regulation skills to our children? So the Um, The summer of connection is to help you as the parent feel empowered to know how to help your children uh, manage their big emotions while also understanding and increase or creating more connection in your own relationship. So I'm looking at the child and I'm looking at you. This isn't about sending our kids to therapy and then being like, you know, screaming at them after it's like, how do we create this connection in our home and with our kids? So we can be the role model. We can become the adult we most desire our children to be. So you can head on over to Heather Chauvin, C-H-A-U-V-I-N.com forward slash summer as well. Okay. How to plan your summers, number one. So energetic time management. ETM is something I talk a lot about on this podcast. It is something I've talked about in my book. Uh, It is something I teach my clients. This is about reverse engineering how you want to feel. So in the summer, I double down on what is it that my soul is craving? What is it that I want? What is it that I desire? And the reason why I do this specifically in the summer is although the sun is shining and the days may be nicer with that summer energy, I used to be severely depressed. And I remember when I would literally wake up in the morning and the sun was shining and I could hear the birds chirping and I didn't want to get out of bed. And because I didn't want to get out of bed, what that did to me was there's something wrong with me. I'm a bad person. Why can't I figure this out? And I remember as I began to implement energetic time management in my life and learn how to reverse engineer how I wanted to feel, I started to feel more alive and aligned. And when summer comes around, there's so many things you want to do. And it might just be sitting by the pool. It might be going to the beach. I don't freaking know. It's going to be different for everybody. But we still have only 24 hours in the day and we still have all these other things to do. 
So if I can maximize the summer energy, if I can maximize that time and almost double down on recharging my soul, when September starts again, I'm going to feel that much more alive and aligned. And so I'm asking myself the emotionally uncomfortable questions this summer. Wouldn't it be nice if, so write that down because I talk about that journal prompt all the time. Wouldn't it be nice if, like, and use the filter of summer. Wouldn't it be nice if, what do you want your summer to look like? Wouldn't it be nice if I had Fridays off? Wouldn't it be nice if I only had to work half a day on Monday? Wouldn't it be nice if we could do this? Wouldn't it be nice if I had extra help? Wouldn't it be nice if I didn't have to give two shits about this? Wouldn't it be nice if, I don't know. Write down your wouldn't it be nice list for your specific summer. After I do that, then what I do is I go back and I start asking myself, what is it in this list that I need to take action on so I can create the space for what I desire in this list? Because I'm telling you right now, I have learned from like years and years and years and years of experience that when I ignore the things on that list and I literally live in a reactive state, like, oh, the kids are home. Oh, I can't get work done. Oh my God. And oh, now I need to garden. Oh crap. The weeds are coming up again. Oh, now I need to go to this event, that event. Guess what? I'm still angry. I'm still resentful. I'm still burnt out. How can I feel alive and aligned while still doing all these things and creating space? And I'm going to tell you right now, doing less is not necessarily restorative. I work with a lot of ambitious women that are like, I don't want to be sitting by the pool all day reading. I don't want to slow down. And I agree with you. You don't actually have to slow down because if your soul is not craving to do that, it's not about doing more. It's about doing what your soul is craving. And so I encourage you to learn how to manage your energy, not your time you're going to become more alive. You're going to become more aligned. And when you do that, you're happier, you're focused, you're fulfilled, you're present with your kids, you're present with your family, and you can actually enjoy the summer. And I've told these stories again and again, and again, go back and listen to the other episodes on the podcast. My book, Dying to Be a Good Mother, I talk about this a lot, but Your emotions are here to get your attention. They're not here to say life sucks and this is it. If you're burnt out, it's not a season of doing nothing. It's a season of doing the things that your soul is craving. But what happens is the reason why we don't do these things is because it's emotionally uncomfortable. And it's emotionally uncomfortable because you're going to have to say no to people. You might have to disappoint a few people. You're going to trigger a few people. People are going to judge you. And I just believe in my soul that the better you feel, that is the secret to like getting what you want, but also impacting other people. And I might talk about that in a second. The second thing that I'm doing is being very boundaried with my Fridays and Mondays. So I want to go to the extreme to say I'm taking Fridays and Mondays off, but that's probably not true. I love the work that I do. And there's also a reason why I'm not taking the full summer off. Like, yes, there'll be more space in my calendar away from quote unquote work. Um, Things do slow down in the summer, but we still, we still have our group calls. The reason why is because I've actually done that before where I've taken a month off of like no calls. Um, And I actually see it negatively affecting me. Um, I love my work. I love what I teach. I love my community. Um, And I need space and time, but I definitely don't need to take two months off to recover from my work. And I think that's also a... um, a byproduct of this like all or nothing culture where I don't need a vacation from my life. My life is sustainable. So vacations are an add-on to my life. 
And so summer is a time to optimize for me. It is not a time to recover, if that makes sense, because I build recovery in my weeks. I build recovery in my life. It is not specifically a season of like, oh my gosh, I need to take two, three months to recover from my life. Um, those it's like hours or days. So Fridays and Mondays are blocked on my calendar. I can still do work. I can still have calls, but I'm just boundaried around that. So if someone needs me or something comes up, I can have that call or that meeting on a Friday or Monday. I'm just more boundaried around it. So that is the second thing that I'm doing this summer. And then also if we go camping, we love to camp, we love adventure, we love hiking. So we can make those longer four-day work weeks. Um, and that's kind of like... Uh, universal where people are taking longer weekends in the summer. So just do it yourself. Like literally go into your calendar right now and block off your Fridays and Mondays and just be a little more boundaried around them. That way, if someone's like, hey, do you want to meet this week? You're saying, yeah, let's meet Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You're not letting them in on a Monday or Friday and you will watch how you will get more done in less time. The third thing that I'm doing is around the kids. So depending on the summer, my children have been enrolled in summer camps. They are not going to be this summer. Um, and I have thoughts and feelings about this because one, summer camps are so expensive um, in the sense where like you literally need to take a loan out to, especially if you have like multiple children, taking a loan out to like get your kids quote unquote entertained in the summer. So here's my thoughts. Instead of me telling you all the tips and tricks that I do with my kids. Again, remember that my children are 10, 13, and 18. So different strategies for each child. The 18-year-old, you may be thinking, well, Heather, he's taken care of because he's 18 years old, but that's not true. So what I mean by that is he still lives in my house and I value community. I value team. And something that I am not an advocate for is um, binging on screen time. So I'm going to do a whole episode, um, a separate episode specifically on screen time and kids and boundaries and all the things over on my parenting podcast. So that's the emotionally uncomfortable, uh, parenting podcast. And that is a private podcast. So you can check that out at Heather Chauvin, C H A U V I N.com forward slash parenting. But specifically for what I'm doing this summer with the kids is this is for the 10 and uh, 13 year old, not the 18 year old. I have a rule and I say I, my husband and I have this conversation and we literally have to implement it like daily. And then we don't, you know, follow through with the boundary and then people get angry and mad and then we have to go back to it. So please understand I'm not perfect. But last year it was no screen time after 2 p.m. Now, my goal is to push this as far as I can, that they cannot have screen time until after dinner. The challenge with this is making sure that all the screens are locked up. This sounds awful, but having a, we have a cupboard, all the screens go in there. It could be a computer, it could be a laptop, it could be an iPad, a phone, whatever it is. Everything goes in this cupboard. It is locked at night. Like literally I put a little bungee cord around it and like a lock that you would use on a school locker and nobody can go in there until X time, right? So when I do that and I'm consistent with it, it works because the typical behavior is get up, go to the screen, right? Or, Hey, get off, get off the screen. And then I'm not paying attention. And then they're going back to the screen. So it's the same with me. Like I had to buy one of those little cell phone jails on Amazon. It's like this clear little box and maybe I'll do a reel on it or something one day, but it's this clear little box. You can put a timer on it and I put my cell phone in there and I can't tell you how many times I go to it to be like, oh, I got to check my email. Oh, I have a thought. Oh, da, 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 da. It's just boundaries. That's all it is. Our children are not bad. We are not bad. We are not broken. Our children are not broken. This comes back to boundaries and emotional discomfort. So when you still have quote unquote control over your children's screen time and they're not, 
you know, to the ninth degree. I mean, we could talk about this with teenagers. I'll do a whole episode on that with teenagers um, because I have thoughts on that too. Because we do live in a culture where they grew up with this screen, the cell phone next to them all the time. So I'll talk about that later. But you here's the point is have a boundary and do your best to stick to it. You are not going to be perfect. I am not perfect, but have a rule. At least you have a North star, right? Like have a rule and stick to that rule. So if you are working full-time in the house or out of the house and your children are going to childcare or somewhere, they may be entertained. They may be busy, right? They may have camps. They may whatever. And that might not be an issue, but maybe when they're home, you also want them to be a little bored. So for me, my children um, are kind of working. They're around me all the time and they will be mostly the summer as well. They'll go and play with their friends and they'll do their things, but we're not, there's not, um, they might have like a, a week camp here or there, but it will be local. Um, but mainly I'm letting my kids be bored this summer. That's it. Uncomplicated, letting them be bored. Um, they're going to call me out. They're going to be like, yeah, you say this every summer. And then, um, you know, you're not strict with it, but here's my thing. I actually notice that if I create a rule and just stick to that simple rule, like one rule, no screen time before X time, all the screens go in a cupboard, which is something new this year. Um, last year it wasn't in the cupboard, but I noticed part of the boundary leak was that they were in plain sight. And of course I'm not going to micromanage everything. So that's freaking exhausting. So it's like, Hey, put everything in the box, lock the box. It doesn't open until X time with the consistency of that. My children get to play with whatever the hell else they want. They can go outside. They can be bored. They can read. I don't care if they sit in their room for eight hours. That may be what they do at first, but eventually their brains are going to say, I'm bored. I'm going to go do this thing. We have to let our children be bored. We have to let our children have their feelings. We have to let our children figure out what is going on in their world. And here's the other thing. Kids these days are not playing physically together. Children are playing together online, but it's okay for you to have a standard that that is not okay and that is not your way of being. I find the more emotional capacity you gain to handle your discomfort of owning and holding a boundary, the more you will be able to look at your children and say, hey, I see your board. That's okay. You know the rule. This won't happen until 3 p.m., 5 p.m., whatever your rule is. Um, <clears throat> the last thing I want to say about that is I know this is hard. I know there's a lot of work here. I know, but I always think about the bigger picture. I always think about like, why do I do these things? If I want to fly by the seat of my pants, that's fine too. But I always regret it because I'm always disappointment or disappointed, or I become angry and resentful. And I don't like planners. I don't like pre-planning every second of my life. I don't want to be a drill, a drill sergeant. I just got to have some core foundational boundaries, some core foundational like blocks. And there's a lot of deep self-trust that comes with this journey. There's a lot of support that's required in order for you to grow and to feel like you are successful and proud. There's some big wounds that we have to work through as well. Like being okay with not people pleasing, even for your children, right? Feeling like the guilt, the guilt of like working when you quote unquote, want to be with your children all summer. And if that's the truth, then maybe you can't do it this summer, but maybe you can do it next summer if you pre-plan for it. Um, I remember back in the day, I used to convince myself that I wanted to be with my kids full time in the summer. And then I actually did that. And I was like, oh, that's not what I wanted. And again, that's 
I always say it's the feeling you're after. It's not the thing. And so sometimes we do need to work and our kids are going to be playing outside in the sun. And then other days we're going to be in the sun with our kids and we're not going to want to be there. This is the duality of life. But I just truly believe that if your North Star is how do you want to feel and you learn how to reverse engineer that, you're you're going to be so much happier. Your fulfillment is going to be there and you're going to be living in alignment. You're going to feel strong. You're going to feel confident. And you're going to be so fucking proud of yourself. So to recap, the three things that I am doing this summer to feel more aligned and alive is number one, energetic time management. I'm managing my energy, not my time and asking myself, wouldn't it be nice if and putting some of those things on my calendar. Number two is I'm being incredibly boundaried with my Fridays and my Mondays and creating those longer weekends. And again, putting whatever I want on the weekends. And number three is having screen time boundaries with my kids, um, which is, is definitely going to be a shit show at times. Um, and the teenager, that's a whole other can of worms. So I will, uh, share more of that on the parenting podcast with you. And if you are like, oh my gosh, I'm a working mom, business owner, raising children, and I am ready for profit. And I want to know how to do this in an hour a day or less. I want you to head on over to Heather Chauvin, C-H-A-U-V-I-N.com forward slash summer. Um, it's a hybrid. So you're not just joining a coaching program. It's actually one-on-one coaching with me. Um, you're getting a group as well. You're getting live calls, but we're integrating, we're doing the work. So you're going to be getting a one-on-one strategy session with me focused on your business, not my business. And the idea of what I want your business to look like, it's going to be based on you. Um, the second one is, the summer of connection. So if your focus this summer is to improve your relationship with your children, to really help them with their anxiety, their stress management, maybe the school year stressed them out. I know my kids can get really, really stressed out. Um, Let's talk about emotional regulation. So I'm going to teach this skill to you. You're going to teach it to your kids. And it's all about the summer of connection. So you can find more details at Heather Chauvin, C-H-A-U-V-I-N.com forward slash Summer, you got this. How are you going to plan your summer? I want to know. Find me on Instagram at Heather Chauvin. Send me a DM. It can be way better. It doesn't need to be a shit show. Just got to do a little, just got to be a little proactive instead of reactive. See you there.